now nine o'clock. I call a meeting to order. First item, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Is there any additions or deletions? Mr. Chair, at this time I'd like to ask the board to remove uh, item G. Mr. Waltz will be unable uh, to be here to give his report to the town. In addition, please note there's a revised cover sheet for item J5 on your dais. Um, the change to the item is that the requested number of body cameras has been reduced from 54 to 40. We have to answer any questions if you have any. They won't have any questions. <coughs> if not, I'll entertain a motion. Approve the, uh, the agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have next on the agenda is the public presentation comment period. The agenda public comment period is an opportunity for our citizens to give input on issues on the book on the board's agenda which are not the subject of a public hearing and is not intended as a question answer period. This period has a 20 minute limit and such time will be split equally among the members of the individuals who have signed up. For individuals who wish to give input on Reveling County issues which are not on the board's agenda, there is a 60 minute general public comment period at the end of each meeting. Ms. Mouse, has anyone signed up? Yes, Mr. Chairman, three individuals. Mr. Gary Kushner. Good morning. My name is Gary Kushner. I live at 1106 Fetchett Road in the South District. I first want to say that I have, uh, in the past year, had the opportunity to work with the Planning Department on several issues. And, uh, I was very pleased with the response I've gotten from them. They've uh, had a great attitude and uh, were very professional in response. And the citizens of the county are very fortunate to have someone like Taryn Logan directing that, uh, that team. Um, I'm here to speak to agenda item K, a closed session uh, under personnel. Uh, I've had the opportunity over the last month to speak to uh, literally hundreds of citizens and taxpayers in Warren County. Um, and there's a great concern about the performance of the county administrator in serving the citizens of this board over the past several years. Uh, I'm under the impression that that contract expires in mid-2020 and that there may be some effort to extend that contract before it expires and before a new board can be impaneled in 2020 after the election. I believe the new board should have the opportunity to decide who will assist Warren County citizens and the Board of Supervisors in our future challenges and not have that taken away from them. I uh, hear that uh, the board has spoken to a recognition of the trust that uh, may have been damaged over several issues in the county in the past couple of years and uh, their desire to try and improve that trust. And I would uh, urge them to think very carefully were they to uh, venture forward with such an, uh, an initiative and uh, leave the contract for the county administrator to a new board. Thank you. Paul Gabbard. Good morning. Good morning. I hardly ever am up at this hour, so this is new to me. Uh, Mr. Murray, I hope your health is, is good. Uh, the, the two things I have is funding of the two additional Commonwealth attorneys. I, I don't know why we would need two more. I just see that as a, a more expense, more money being wasted by the county. I, I just, I don't get it. The other thing is the, the award of contract for the third party for the new Rivermont Fire Department. 
is, is uh, the public going to know who this third party is, and is it going to be is it going to be awarded before we know who it is, so we know that it's not somebody that's affiliated with anybody in the county? And I agree with the previous gentleman on the voting to renew the common or the uh, county administrator's contract. That should be left until the new people are uh, get seated uh, because nothing ever seems to happen while this administration is in place. Pardon me, Paul, could you give your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry, Paul Gabber, 1221 Valley View Drive. You're welcome. That's all I have to say. Jerry Mayanko? Jerry Mayanko, 157 Remount View Road, uh, Fire and Rescue. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, county staff, I'm pleased to be here represent the chief maybe this morning to give you a brief update on our volunteer uh, fire academy and training program. Uh, after two years of canceling our fire academy due to low enrollment numbers, uh, which was matched by neighboring localities canceling their for the, theirs for the same reason, we're excited to be before you today to tell you that we're going to begin our 2019 volunteer fire academy on August 19th of this month with 21 volunteers. Uh, enrolled in the program. These students represent five of our volunteer fire stations. Two students are enrolled from uh, or as outside students in the program. This five-month training program will meet 16 hours a week and certify those volunteers at the firefighter level one and level two uh, programs with ancillary uh, requirements and certifications. Um, this just goes to show the hard work and dedication of our career and and volunteer members have placed in the recruitment and retention of volunteers. And Chief Mabey remains optimistic that the hard work and dedication will continue uh, to increase that volunteerism, identify and develop new ways for community volunteer recruitment, and improve the retention of those community volunteers. I want to thank this board for their continued support in our volunteer and career fire and EMS response system. And we look forward to seeing each one of you at our graduation ceremony for this academy in January 2020. Thank you. Thank you. No one else to sign up. All right, thank you. <coughs> Next report, <coughs> Community Policy and Management Team Strategic Plan, Mark Leeson. <coughs> Morning. Good morning. I'm Mark Leeson. I'm the current chair of the Warren County Community Policy Management Team. I'm also the vice chair of the advisory board in Warren County and the chief operating officer for Northwestern Community Services Board. So I came here today to talk to you briefly about the Youth Advisory Board, which you <coughs> created in 2014. Uh, you may recall that we had a five year strategic plan and we reviewed it in, uh, not too long ago. Uh, the Youth Advisory Board was comprised of a number of community members and community organizations, and a number of those individuals were involved in the review of the five-year strategic plan. Um, the Youth Advisory Board was set out to be a place where community members could come together and look <coughs> at, plan for the needs of youth and families in Warren County. Uh, we had a lot of successes. We established a community liaison position to help assist citizens in protecting community resources. We created some youth surveys, which I stood before you presented about a year ago. Um, and we've also supported in cooperation with another, with a lot of other organizations, a number of other initiatives. For example, we were part of creating a brown bag launch series that brought community providers together to discuss the needs of Warren County, support education. We uh, had a youth mentor program in collaboration with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, uh, just a lot of developments. In fact, I had the opportunity to look at all the developments that happened in Warren County for the families since 2014. And I, I was actually driving down Leach Run Parkway this morning, and I thought, wow, you know, even Leach Run has had a role in helping connect families in a more efficient way to resources. 
And you think about things like that, some big things and some small things, and go, you know, a lot's happened in Warren County since 2014. The list is actually three pages. If I went back and got it, we'd be here for about 25 minutes. But I want to say that because I want you know, Warren County to be proud of all the things that have happened since 2014 that have helped foster good services and relationships for our children and families. So um, where we at is that in our strategic plan, we looked at the goals of the Youth Advisory Board, and we looked at the goals of the CPMP, and said, well, they're pretty much aligned. And as a result of our discussions in the strategic planning session, we thought it would be best to merge the advisory board with the community policy and management team. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, but we felt like it was properly within the control of both groups, um, with really outlining code about the community policy and management team. They share similar visions, missions. They actually share, share similar uh, core members. If you look at the core members of the CPMT and the core members of the YF Youth Advisory Board, they're the same. And they've been the same for a long time. So we have a lot of history to move forward with. Um, and we think that bringing them together will create a much broader and wider platform for us to keep looking at the challenges and the successes that are facing the youth in Warren County and the families in Warren County and provide a way for the community organizations that serve those people and serve you uh, to plan for the future. So that's it. Uh, we decided to merge the two of them together, Youth Advisory Board, Community Policy Management Team. And unless you have any questions, I'm done. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Next on the agenda is a report from Virginia Department of Transportation, Mr. Carter. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, we didn't have a, we didn't come to a meeting in July, so this report comes June, July, and August. Uh, we completed all the secondary mowing in July, and this month we have begun the primary centers for, for our second round, and then we finished that we'll go back on the secondaries for their second round. We've done asphalt patching on 619, 624, 615, and 7, uh, 673. We're continuing the skin patching on routes 619 and 634. And then some of this is being done in preparation for next year's service treatment. We did ditching and shoulder repairs on 622, 638, 340, and 55 West. We graded an, an, an applied stone where it was needed on the various non-hard surface roads. Of course, that's a continual thing every month. And then we repaired a pipe on 634. We also had some storms this uh, past month where we uh, swept a lot of stone and removed debris from various routes also. <laughs> And then this month, depending on the amount of rain we get, we will be applying gas <coughs> control as we get the request where it's needed. Our rural rustic program, Rocky Lane, is completed. Ashby Station is completed. Bucks Mill Road has been started. Richardson Road will start this month. We're expecting a final environmental clearance any day. And Oregon Hollow Road, has completed except for tying in the driveways and that will be completed this month. Morgan Ford Bridge repair, the contract was awarded, but they're waiting on the notice to proceed until they, they're waiting on some documentation from the contractor. Uh, the ditch repair on, uh, at the Catlett Mountain Road, 619, 677, we're receiving the environmental approval this week, and that will be completed this month. In addition to the ditch uh, at that particular location, we're going across the road and doing that ditch at the same time, and we'll be replacing a pipe out here to help improve that drainage. Are there any other issues the board would like to need to address? Does anyone have anything? <coughs> The Stokes Airport uh, Road, the contractor did a magnificent job on that. It's really almost perfect driving down through there by the, by the uh, airport, on the airport road now. So, good job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. 
Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to say on Courthouse Road, there's been a shoulder issue about a half mile in, and your guys have done a wonderful job of building up some shoulder there where I know it's been an issue there for years and it's not much to work with, but I know you've been working on it and it is improved. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Carter. I, I did. Go ahead. I want to say a positive thing about the railroad crossing at Fairground Road. I know that the VDOT didn't fix that. The railroad company did, but it's a good improvement in citizens. I'm hearing a lot of positive feedback to my constituents. It's very good. good. I, I know that's been a problem, as well as the one on Rockland Road. Yes. The Rockland Road one is, uh, needs to be fixed. I know the flyover is in the plans, but they're still saying, you know, they hate to wait four or five years for the flyover. I, I understand. The, the other thing, uh, and I mentioned this to you ahead of time this morning, the fair, you know, I want to be fair to you that I've been hearing a lot of complaints about the Morgan Ford Bridge crossing. People are leaving trash. Uh, they've been picking up nails. Uh, one gentleman's on Facebook. Uh, he had a, a bunch of nails. I think he said it was 200 nails that he picked up, and he said he thought somebody deliberately left it at the bridge. And we need to do something. People are getting tired of this. And I, I understand, but I, I, <clears throat> at the same time, there's, I mean, other than go back and clean it up, there's very little that VDOT can do that's an enforcement well, type issue. I'm going to I'll mention this to Mr. Stanley, too, and um, uh, something I placed out there in the, in the, on the, the Facebook was having some security uh, surveillance cameras. And uh, people seem to like that idea. Is that something that VDOT <coughs> might be willing to go in with us, or? Well, that's something that, that, again, that's a sort of a law enforcement issue, so that's something that the Sheriff's Office, obviously, we would work with the Sheriff's Office where we can, you know, if they came to us, but it's not something that we would do. This is not just a, an issue that's germane to Morgan Ford. I mean, it, it's a shame to say, but, but people are trashy. I mean, it, it, it's un very unfortunate that a few that do that run it for everybody else. It is, and they're hoping, <coughs> the hope is that we can get the, the, you know, the entranceway and everything fixed as quick as we can so that we can put in the facilities and amenities there so that the citizens will have trash cans that they can use more available to throw their trash in. Well, so we're, we're hoping that that uh, uh, notice to proceed is going to be received around the 1st of September. And once they do that, then they can start. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carter, I've traveled between five states recently for graduation parties with some of my grandkids and also some of their birthdays. And I have to compliment you. Those other states should see how you operate. Now, I'm very pleased with the way our area looks, the way the roads are maintained, it's not done elsewhere. I thank you personally for what you do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate the compliment. We're not perfect, but if you tell us where we're short, we'll try to make it out. And you do. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, report Economic Development Authority, Mr. Parsons. Good morning, thank you for having me here today. Um, well, over the last month, we've welcomed our new board member, Jory Martin. She's been a fantastic addition to the board, uh, very active. She comes to us with a great deal of experience in finance and real estate, and she's certainly going to be an asset going forward, so we certainly appreciate that. Um, we're working on our audit, the FY18 audit that uh, is so dearly needed to be completed. Um, we are working with Hoddle and Willis, Carolyn Stimmel and Yao Tai and Barber to move forward. Um, they're working on proposed adjusted journal entries on the debt side of our balance sheet. We're reviewing the adjusted journal entries we got from Cherry Beckert on the asset side, uh, fair market valuations, and then the, uh, they're looking at the USDA loans 
to, to make sure that everything is in line there. Um, I wish I could give you the time frame on when it's going to be completed. We think that the adjustments that um, Hoddle and Willis and Carolyn are working on should take about 60 days, and then from there, Yantide and Marble will have to finish up. And they haven't been able to give me a time frame just yet on when that will take place. But I'm certainly pushing them probably to the point of bugging them. Um, on our USDA loans, uh, we're planning to meet soon with uh, BJ Fulcher and Joe Boatwright at the USDA uh, to ensure that we're on track with them and their requirements as it relates to the status of the loan program. Uh, my colleague Gretchen Henderson and I have been working to get our delinquent accounts brought up to date. And since we've been on board, I believe we've gotten five or six delinquent accounts up to date. And uh, through working with Dan Witten's office and Jennifer Woody, who's been great to work with, um, we're working to uh, get some of the other ones caught up or at least form um, new agreements with them to where we can get them paying again. Uh, on the fiscal agency, uh, we continue to transition into the fiscal agency that um, both the Board of Supervisors and the Board of Directors have agreed upon. All of our deposits are now going into the new accounts that have been set up here at the county for our operations. Um, Andre Fletcher has been working with um, our accountant to get a chart of accounts set up. I, I think that work is about done. And then we're looking to get the, the actual checks for the account so we can begin uh, paying our bills out of those new accounts. Um, as it relates to, to our properties, um, we do have the um, properties on East Main Street and Fairground Road up for sale. Um, we're in the process of getting them up on our website to try to advertise them. We do have interested parties in, in both of those properties and I'm cautiously optimistic about uh, the activity that we're seeing and, and the clients that we have for them. Um, on Kendrick Drive, um, as I mentioned in my board report, um, we've been analyzing the, the solar panel uh, power system that we have, and we got an assessment of that system. I, I won't go through that here. I think you all have that in, in your report. Um, we're going to have to take a look at, at what the best thing to do there is. Um, we also have some roof issues out at 400 D Kendrick, and those solar panels will have to come off in order to either fix or replace sections of the roof. And I think that's a factor we'll have to take into consideration uh, as we move forward there. Um, prospect activity. Um, we, we do continue to have good prospects for all of our properties. Um, even here in the last week or so, we've had um, a couple, three come forward that, um, that I'm very optimistic about for all of the properties that we have available for sale. On the VEDP site characterization <coughs> project, um, we're waiting for the state to provide us with a tier ranking on our sites, and as we get that information from them, uh, the board will be able to decide uh, where they want to invest to increase the competitiveness of each of those sites so that we can be as competitive as possible for new investment with the rest of the state and the country. Uh, business retention over the last month, I've met with Roanoke Cement, Dominion Energy, and Interbate at their facilities and had good discussions with them. Um, I think both, all three of those companies are, are doing very well. Um, over the next week or so, um, we'll be meeting with Exalta and, um, and family, dollar, family Dollar to get up to speed on their operations and see how we may be able to help them as well. Um, I did meet with Lee Cranford and Laura Smith at the Virginia Inland Port and learned a great deal about their operations out there. It's a, a thriving thriving operation and it's the reason that a lot of the companies out there are there and I think it's going to be a, a very uh, big influence on, on the prospects that we have in the future to look to come here. I think we're going to see a lot more activity out there in that area. On the Front Wall Police Department, um, our accountant Carolyn has been working with B.J. Wilson at the town to identify the principal and the interest on those projects and we're trying to move that project toward completion where the town can get permanent financing and then get that, that construction account off our books. And I think they're making pretty good progress there. 
Leach Run Parkway, um, I think we've had a situation for about a year or a year and a half where we've kind of had this uh, standoff between the engineer and the contractor as relates to whose responsibility some of the last remaining punch list items uh, falls upon. And so um, I've, I've gotten a statement from all the parties involved, the DEQ and Pannoni and Brand Civil as to what they think the situation is and, and we're working to try to get some resolution. I'm going to push very hard to get this closed out because it's just been dragging on for too long, I feel. Policies and procedures. Um, as you well know, we have several new board members. I've been working with them and all of the board as we look to define our policies and procedures. We were forming committees for uh, communications, our asset management, and the microloans. If we get to a point again where we start making more loans, and I think that having those committees helps to keep our board engaged and make sure that we're all on the same page internally. And I'm very excited about uh, developing standard operating procedures for, for all the facets of our work. And then finally, um, I've mentioned since I got here that we want to revise our strategic plan. And the board has rightfully said that we need to be working hand in hand with the county and the town. So I'll be getting the letter out to both the county and the town here in the near future inviting each to come to the table and work with us as we try to revise our strategic plan to make sure that we're including your goals and priorities and the towns in that plan. And so with that, any questions I'll be glad to answer? Does anyone have any questions? I do. Uh, Mr. Parsons, so uh, I know that the, uh, the I'm going to touch the base of Bobby solar panels, okay? And uh, back in 2008, this is before you probably even, maybe didn't even know the front wall existed, but I was on the town council and uh, it was led by Stan Brooks at the time, and they were trying to rein in the EDA. And our council was on board with that, and the board of supervisors wasn't necessarily with us on it at the time, but we got back an opinion from the EDA, basically we couldn't touch them. But there was a solar panel issue that came up later and in that I was initially told when I was a councilman that it was going to be free not to worry my little head everything's free well it ended up coming up that free deal ended up being 17 million dollars and uh, uh, I voted for that project at the end because AMP America got involved and it was a project that was properly done and they ended up deciding not to do it but initially, that was going to fall on the, not the taxpayers, but the rate payers, the rate people who pay the, the, the bill on their electric utilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how, what the heck was going on with the EDA with the solar panels? I mean, how much did this thing initially cost? It's my understanding that the solar panels on the roof of our building, I believe it was four hundred and eighty-two thousand dollars. That well was what I. Kind of hurt, not to interrupt you, but 400 and some thousand. First, I saw that this was ever done was the uh, the the, uh, the the free paper that Mr. Radigan puts out, and they had a picture. I guess it was a drone that took a picture, and they put it on their front page. And uh, I mean, this is outrageous. I, and and then I heard the rumor that the roof was leaking and that the stuff was going to need to come off. And now I'm reading that it's worth, is this correct, $25,000? So the assessment that we had, the, the gentleman that did the assessment said on the extreme high end, as it sits there now, it could be worth up to a quarter of a million dollars. But by the time you take it apart, take it down, move it somewhere else. Which is necessary it, now. Absolutely. Yeah. So after all of that, he said we'd be doing well, to paraphrase, to get $25,000 out of it. Now, whether or not that's actually the case and we could get more or, heaven forbid, even less, I don't know. But that's, but that's who, one of the Who is questions. responsible for, for this project? For the solar <coughs> Yes, who, is respond who, who agreed to do this? You know, I, I, have to, I don't know for sure, but I would imagine it would be my predecessor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have nothing more. Thank you. Anyone else have anything? I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that the EDA is going to be 
selling some of the properties. Would the EDA be using the county's excess value when they put these uh, properties up for sale? That, that's a factor we're taking into consideration, but we've also um, obtained appraisals on each of the properties that we have, and, and the board has looked at both the assessed value and the appraisals and said the price. So it would be a combination of something, um, perhaps one or the other of those? Yes, sir. Okay, that's, a, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the report from board members. Mr. Carter. I think he left. Can we got all we Well, if you want to. Uh, just a couple of things. The, there's an, uh, the Appaloosa Festival is going to be held August 31 to September 3rd at Skyline Ranch Resort. I think it's the third or fourth year. Fifth year. Okay. So anyway, you know, it's kind of growing year by year. They expect 30 to 35 bands. Uh, times are 10 a.m. to 10.30. I believe there are uh, campsites available, stay overnight and those things. And uh, I wish them good weather and a good uh, event. Also, on the 31st, uh, it's the end of Silver Blast, and that's going to be held at the fairgrounds. And it starts at 1 and it ends at 9 p.m. And it's music and wine fest, and it benefits the Shenandoah Valley Equine Rescue Network. And again, that's on the 31st, which is a Saturday. Um, the Warren County Fair, that began last night, I believe, and that runs till Saturday the 10th. And where would the Warren County Fair be held? Probably the fairgrounds. So that makes sense. Okay. And the last thing is, uh, National Night Out is tonight, and that's from 6 to 9. And anybody that happens to see this tomorrow, they're going to miss it. Um, but mark it on your calendar for next year. And that's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Thomas. Thank you. On July 26th, I attended a ribbon cutting at Martin's for their online shopping and grocery pickup along with uh, Bill Seelock from the town council. It's nice to have that service on the South River end of the county. I think people will enjoy being able to do that. Thank you. I attended the RSW jail authority meeting, and I'd like to thank uh, Superintendent Gilkerson for the excellent job his people are doing maintaining the grass. <coughs> And making the entrance way coming off 522 to the town limits look nice. It's what it should be. It's not overgrowing. It's welcoming. And if we want tours, we need to have that. Also attended the Back Room Brewery ribbon cuttings last Saturday. And it is great to see someone who's had a dream and has <coughs> developed her dream in steps. And I compliment uh, Billy Clifton for accomplishing what she has done. Attended the executive board meeting of Giles B. Post 53 the American Legion. I attended first the executive board meeting and then the next night their general membership meeting. They are planning and working on their 100th anniversary of the post. And that's a milestone. And they're asking for a resolution uh, and for any veteran that has not joined please feel free to do so. Now, and I was going to mention National Nights Out, but uh, Mr. Carter had already brought that up. And I like to do one thing that we normally don't do. But we have two people today who are very special days. Emily, Dwayne, I wish you happy birthday. And would everybody join in in just a short rendition of happy birthday. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I know. Thank you for that later. God grant you many years. Okay, Mr. Sarah. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was humbled to serve as a panel member alongside Winchester Councilman John Wendham, Winchester Councilwoman Tim 
Kirby Street and Frederick County Supervisor Blaine Dunn of the Red Bud District at the Blue Ridge Association of Realtors meeting on the morning of July the 24th at the Hall of M. Warren County. Uh, it was a very good event. Uh, we were working on economic development, things that the realtors could do in the area. And here. And also, I did the Fireman's Carnival Food Concession, the famous Fireman's Relish sold out the last Saturday, July the 20th, and it was a very busy, busy evening for all, and I want to give kudos to Cheryl here. She uh, posted on Facebook, and I saw them, and I got over there, and I had a great time. And uh, uh, Larry Oliver, my understanding is, is a temporary chief of uh, Fire Station One, and he, he does a, a, a great job there. God bless our Fire and Rescue Department. Uh, also, uh, work the food concessions at a uh, Cardinals baseball game, and that was uh, a game they won nine to six, and that was a Wednesday. And I was uh, humbled to work that, and uh, some campaign staff and a team that has been assembled came and helped me do that. Um, also, uh, just yesterday, I went out and met with my friend Billy Clifton that Mr. Murray mentioned, and she has a fantastic facility at the Back Room Brewery. Uh, she told me the Amish built it, came in, it was a family that built it. Uh, weddings and receptions, it's a big room, and they have an upstairs. And where people can overlook and it's just, it's fantastic for our community. And so she says she has some debt and she'd like to see some people book the rooms and, and come. So I'll put a plug in for them. Uh, also, as mentioned uh, to Mr. Ed Carter about the Morganport Bridge, the, the trash that's been there. Um, you know, we, we definitely need to, hopefully, our community can come forward. And, Quit throwing out the trash at a few. I'm, I'm sure it's what it is. I mean, yeah, as Mr. Carter mentioned, I mean, I see it along my roadway where I live. I, I pick up trash there fairly often, and um, we we really need to take more pride in our community. And uh, and the nails that this gentleman found, he said they've been spewed out. He said that it's been placed out there intentionally, and you know that's very expensive for people to have to fix those uh, plugs in their tires and stuff. It's really uncalled for. And people need, we need to take more pride in our community. Um, uh, that's all I have for right now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fox, I'd uh, just like to report on July the 26th, I attended the EDA meeting and was impressed with the, the op their operations at the time being. Thank you. Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, members of the board, um, we've confirmed the public meeting on the Clark County boundary line adjustment. The meeting will be held August 29th from 4, uh, well, I think, is it, what time, Bob, did we set? On the 4 to 7. 4 to 7 at the uh, Company 6 Auxiliary Building located at 6363 Hallsville Road. This is the building um, between the fire station and the POSF's community building. Letters will be mailed out hopefully this week to affected property owners along the entire length of the <coughs> Recycling markets in the U.S. and throughout the world have experienced significant changes over the past two years. These changes have created challenges for communities that separately uh, collect recycled materials for recovery. Uh, materials must be cleaned in order to be processed into marketable commodities. The value of recycled materials has decreased in many municipalities are now paying to have their materials recycled. These difficult conditions require a careful review of existing recycling systems and infrastructure in order to modify them to increase their sustainability. The Northern Shenandoah Valley Regional Commission is putting together a proposal from SCS engineers to evaluate recycling in the planning area for the Regional Commission with an emphasis researching processing capability for collective recycling materials. Um, we're looking forward to working with them. Uh, we've been able to keep you know, plastics and, and uh, metals and glass uh, at our facilities, uh, but uh, like our sister jurisdictions and neighboring jurisdictions, uh, we're always looking for opportunities to be able to uh, reduce our cost. 
keep you posted on efforts with the Regional Commission. Uh, Project-wise, Tomahawk Drive Road Addition Project, a project is well under construction. Uh, we are hoping that preliminary grading operations, uh, weather permitting, will be completed by the end of this week. The project itself should be completed by mid-September. Uh, as Mr. Carter mentioned, uh, Oregon Hollow Road, VDOT substantially complete with that project. And the only work remaining is to tie in the driveway connections. And uh, I know uh, I can spoke from Mr. Murray and Mr. Fox, but Bucks Mill Richardson Road, which has been bounced around in the six year plan for a number of years, uh, VDOT has started on Bucks Mill and hopefully will be over at Richardson in the near future. Uh, Rubemar Fire Station, HW Construction, continues to make progress on the project with the good weather we've had. Uh, we anticipate starting to pull footers for the building in the next several weeks. Again, the project will take up to 450 days for completion, which should allow the facility to open in the fall of 2020. Uh, new hospital building inspections, hopefully we're close to releasing the entire building permit for the new hospital, but the contractor is making uh, good progress on steel erection for the new facility. And lastly, uh, I also want to congratulate Billy Clifton and Backroom Brewery on their completion of their new facility. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Is there any questions? Do you have any questions for Mr. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Stanley, I'd like to ask a question. Um, actually, uh, Paul brought this up. Um, I didn't want to necessarily pull it, but I would like to, the funding of the two additional homeless attorneys. If I may, I, I do want to move a little bit. So we'll talk about that. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And that was before Mr. Gabbard said something because I think the public need, needs to know I mean, the rationale behind behind this. So I, I definitely want to remove that one. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else have anything for Mr. Stanley? If not, Mr. <coughs> Witt. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I just like to highlight collections. In the month of July, our office collected $24,515 in delinquent personal property, people, and business equipment taxes. So far this year, our office has collected $272,529 in delinquent taxes. So thanks to my staff and making that effort come together. And then to see, uh, steal Mr. Carr's message, um, school starts on Monday, so be safe traveling out there for all the kids walking to the buses. That's everything, unless you have any questions for me. Anyone have any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. Um, Mr. Whitten, I uh, found out it was a Thursday in your office. Uh, 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 apparently, there are some uh, insurance policies that the EDA has been covering by one of our board members. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never, that's never been disclosed to me. I still have still never been officially told. Um, and then also, we went in a closed session, and then, and then we were discussing about policies regarding the actual employees of the EDA. And then I found out that the same board member has those insurance policies. Is that accurate? So your question is what insurance policies? Yes. Um, so Stenberg and Carter Insurance um, is the broker for certain policies. I believe that's the package policy for the offices at Kendrick Lane, um, the Ball Drive building, uh, the, uh, let's see, the Stokes Mark building, the uh, Afton End building. These are all the ones I think off the top of my head. We have other insurance companies that have their workers' comp and our property on Paragraph Road. I believe Mr. Carr may have also, may have also been the broker for the um, Progress Drive um, policy. But um, under before July 1st, under the Virginia Code, um, EDAs don't have to do procurement for um, this, their facilities that they own. Now, starting July 1st, we changed our procurement policy. Now we follow the county's procurement policy. And um, so under that policy, under $10,000, we would get three phone beds. Um, Ten to 20000 we would get written quotes. And over $20,000, we actually put it out to bid. And anything over $10,000 requires EDA board approval. So the majority of these policies were under $10,000, so they, they didn't require EDA board. Actually, I think maybe all the policies were under so they didn't require EDA board approval. But I know the um, executive director and I have talked, and basically as any of these policies expire, they'll be put out to bed, and uh, we'll try to make an effort to get as many bidders as possible. But it's also the policies on the employees of the EDA as well, correct? 
that's part of the package policy. So the mm -hmm. package policy did have a um, crime embezzlement policy of, of a half million dollars. Now the director policy for the board of directors actually is through the state, through the division of risk management, and that's a professional liability policy that covers um, the board of directors. And, and what is your rationale for that, that somebody would not be to disclose that? Um, Mr. Carter's not on the board, uh, EDA board. The um, contract is with the EDA board, it's not with the board of supervisors. And I, I believe Mr. Carter also spoke to the Commonwealth attorney and received an opinion from him as well. Um, I can't give binding advice, I can only give an advisory opinion. Um, a board member has to go to the Commonwealth attorney to get an official opinion. So, the state so, so let me get this straight, a board member can, can help appoint people to a board and then have a pecuniary interest and, and profit by that, and that's not a conflict of interest. Well, he's an employee of Stenberg and Carter. He's not the owner. Under the conflict of interest laws, employees are treated differently than owners. So under the, um, since the contract's not with the Board of Supervisors, um, it doesn't fall under the Conflict of Interest Act, in my opinion. I just want to be on the record that I, I, that was never disclosed to me. And I still have not. I have found that out on my own. Mr. Whitney, is there anything else? Uh, that's everything, unless, you, unless there's any other questions. Any other questions for Mr. Whitney? <clears throat> if not, we move on. The approval of minutes, regular <coughs> meeting of June 18, 2019. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, right, the approval of the minutes of regular meeting of July 16th, 2019. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is the consent agenda. Is there anything to be pulled for discussion? Yes, sir. I'd like to pull uh, for item three and item eight. Is there anything else to be removed for discussion? If not, I'll move for. Uh, um, go ahead. I move that we approve the consent agenda with those two exceptions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. First, we start with number three request funding of two additional Commonwealth attorneys. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, first, uh, there have been two important changes to the comp board staffing requirements regarding the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office that uh, occurred, I'll, I'll say, last minute, uh, very, very last minute. Uh, first, on May 1, 2019, Compensation Board approved the final budget for the 2020 fiscal year, and as a reminder, within a week after that, we had our second budget hearing, so we were basically done with the proposed budget at that point in time. The Compensation Board increased Warren County staffing requirements for the Commonwealth Attorney's Office and approved the funding for one new Assistant Commonwealth Attorney, or ACA, effective July 1, 2019. The Comp Board will contribute $56,697 per year towards the new ACA position. Of course, that doesn't cover benefits and other costs that the county would incur. This change uh, will now require Warren County to employ a total of four <coughs> ACA positions. If you remember during the a budget presentation um, by the uh, Commonwealth Attorney. Uh, he did talk about the fact that uh, Warren County was on the list to receive a new position and was near the top. And again, that's um, basically justified by caseload uh, through their office in, in a number of <coughs> cases. Second, the Virginia Legislature approved a budget amendment through HB 1700 that requires all localities to fund a full time entry level assistant Commonwealth Attorney for every 75 body-worn cameras employed by law enforcement or officers within the locality. Within the locality, not only includes the Sheriff's Office, but the Town Front Road Police Department. Uh, this budget amendment also became effective July 1 of 2019. Uh, a copy of the, that language is included in the packet. Um, the, um, at the time, and back in May, we had a total of 48 body-worn cameras between the 18 the Sheriff's Office and the 30 in Front Royal PD. So again, both of these, I would, I would 
short-term unfunded mandates uh, by the state, given the fact that uh, those budget changes weren't subject to approval by the Board of Supervisors. You didn't really have the opportunity to address that, particularly the uh, HB 1700 language, uh, again, last minute and uh, uh, impacted us. So the request is to transfer $112,420 from reserve for contingencies to uh, compensation for the Assistant Commonwealth Attorney to cover the cost of the two required positions. Um, I won't begrudge the Commonwealth Attorney. Certainly, they have a lot on their plate. <coughs> no doubt, they probably can use the additional uh, staffing in the office. However, there is a budget impact on the county and the taxpayers uh, by additional funds that we have to come up with uh, kind of at the end of the day uh, with the budget to cover the cost. That I'd be happy to answer any additional questions. Does anyone have anything? I think, um, <clears throat> I think the body camera thing, that is an the mandate. I think the additional um, attorney that gives us a little bit of leeway, we don't have to do it. But um, uh, with the body cameras, I don't know if you went to that explanation or not. The reason they're requiring a full time uh, assistant commonwealth attorney for each camera, they're supposed to be watching or looking at all the video that's taken. Is that correct? Even if it's not involved, maybe with a particular alleged crime, they have to sit there and look through it all. So the hope would be at least they would have time to maybe do some other duties within that office. Um, as far as the, the additional um, position, I think Mr. Mann has asked for that periodically. It's good we're getting some of that funded. Um, and right now, like I think you mentioned, I think the Commonwealth Attorney's Office is um, a little short staff, particularly with the ongoing special grand jury that's taking up a lot of people's time. The other contributing factor, too, is I believe Mr. Mann on September 1 will be uh, moving to the circuit court as a judge. And I'm sure they're going to name somebody to fill in for him in the next election, which will be about two months away. But that's going to leave him another person down. So, do I like spending the additional money? No. Is it needed? Unfortunately, I think it is. Especially if we're mandated for the, uh, the attorney to look at the cameras. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? I uh, just want to make sure I get a clarification, if you will. Uh, the compensation board is going to uh, contribute 56697 towards, and it says, <coughs> would it be only for one position, or for, would it be a total of, uh, would that be for those positions? It's just the one. The body worn camera position is 100% locally funded. So we're picking up um, you know, benefits, additional costs associated with the one position that's recruited as part of the budget. We're picking up basically 100% of the new body worn camera position. Okay. That's all that. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. No, go ahead. Yeah, this is a, what I call a classic unfunded mandate. And I read the uh, budget amendments, House Bill 1700. And thank you, Paul, for bringing this up. The, uh, in, in the House Bill 1700, I, I spoke to Chris Collins, he's our, my delegate, the, where, where I vote, but, you know, Warren County split up in three mile shapes. Um, Mr. Collins informed me, and, and I've confirmed by reading here, he says that it, it only applies to counties and cities and not the towns. So we don't count the town of Front Royal's body camera, or at least their cameras they work. So we're, we're doing this because we have 48 body-worn cameras, and, uh, well, that's a believe the minute. So Warren County has 18, and Front Royal has 30. So we're doing this because we have 18 Warren County cameras. And uh, I, I have some heartache about this, because it says up to 75, um, and, and they're forcing us to do this. I, I would like to, to I'm going to, if possible, have a motion to, pass the first one that's funded and the second one to table it to find out more about this uh, wording where it says for up to 75 because we're doing this because we only have 18. Mr. Chairman, may yes. I have a comment? Yes. Front Royal citizens are Warren County citizens. The Front Royal town residents pay Warren County taxes. The body cameras worn by Front Royal police are Warren County citizens. They pay the tax to 
We're not funding something for the people that aren't paying. Thank you. Anything else on this topic? I'd like to ask Mr. Stanley, on our reserves, it says come from the reserve. Our, our reserves can't be placed before they should be. Yes, sir. If you were, remember at the end of the day, um, we went back <coughs> to the motion. It was approved. I think Mr. Carter made the motion. We had to go back and cut um, additional funds from every county budget at the end, and that money was put over in reserve for contingency, so we're, we're okay. Okay. <laughs> Next is item eight, award contract. Take a vote on the meeting. Take a vote on this. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I move that the Board of Supervisors approve a transfer of $112,420 from reserve to contingencies to compensation assistant commonwealth attorney to cover the required costs of the additional two assistant commonwealth attorneys. Second. All in favor? No, we still have no discussion. I like to make a motion to affirm the first position and the table the second position. Second. 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 Yes, I understand <coughs> that where my, my colleague, uh, Ms. Gladys, is uh, town residents are Warren County residents, but as uh, Delegate Collins pointed out, the, the towns are exempt. And, uh, Oh, and also, we're paying for this where it says, uh, I think it's not super clear the way they worded this budget amendment. Uh, I, I would like to have some clarification on it, but if, if it gets passed over what I'm proposing here, that's fine. But I, I would like to have a table and get clarification. Also, and also, uh, we have a new Commonwealth attorney coming in, and just says, the gentleman mentioned that he would like to have the new board members come in to vote for the new contracts of the people that they're going to be working with. I think Mr. Bell would like to have a say on who's hired. Mr. Chairman, yes, if I could address uh, Supervisor Sayers' concerns. Caitlin Jordan, Assistant County Attorney, and Caitlin might have to get you to come up, but um, she reached out and talked to the Compensation Board. It is our understanding that the 75 count includes those officers including the town police force. Mr. Collins is correct, Delegate Collins is correct, that the town doesn't have to hire an attorney, but because, I guess, the felonies and the other stuff that's prosecuted by the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, we are required those numbers do count. Um, you can come up and at least confirm the table in your discussion with them. Good morning. Yes, when I spoke to the compensation board, I was informed that it um, includes the town as well as the county because the Commonwealth attorney prosecutes the town's felonies. Um, so it's included in the study that they did regarding the workload um, brought on by the body worn cameras. That was the consideration. In addition, the um, HB 17 says up to 75 body cameras within a locality. If you have one to 75 body cameras employed within a locality, you have to fund that additional ACA position. If you have set more than 75, then you have to fund two additional ACA positions based on the number of cameras employed within the county. So whether the count, in our situation, whether the county or the count cameras are included, we still are mandated by the HB 17 to fund an additional ACA position because we have body cameras employed within the county. Yeah, I see how it's, it's worded here for up to 75. I agree with that interpretation. It's just, it's unfortunate they sprung this on us. You know, there was a number of us that took the time to go to the, uh, the day down in, in uh, Richmond, you know, the legislative day. And, uh, we weren't even aware that this bill was being processed through. So. Yes, unfortunately, that was the situation. It was a last minute addition, so a lot of localities were blindsided by this addition, but it was approved by the legislature, and so it is a non funded mandate at this point right. in time. But, but are you saying Delegate Collins is wrong as an interpretation that towns are exempted? All I can tell you is what I was informed by the compensation board. Um, that's, that's all I can say at this moment. Any other? Any questions? other questions? If not, thank you very much. Okay, we have two, two motions. 
Yes. I'll, I'll pull my motion with her interpretation. I, I agree with what she's saying. It says for up to 75, so we probably have to do the. But no, I, I want to keep it on her because of the, of the, of the other one that's, that's an unfunded mandate. So I'm going to leave my motion there. So you take his first? Yes. Sure. The fund, of my motion, uh, Mr. Carter's is to fund both, and my motion was to fund the first one, which is already funded, and the second one would be the table, the second position. So which are we? Yeah, we have to. We have to vote on the motion to postpone will take precedence. Yes. Um, so if you want to handle I'm that sorry. motion first. The motion to postpone. Could you, I'm sorry. If you could um, state a date you want to postpone it to, um, that'd be helpful if it's the next meeting. Postpone it to our next meeting. Do we have any more discussion? Could we read that motion, please? You read your motion. <clears throat> to, um, it was Mr. Carter made the initial body motion, and then I moved to amend to fund the first position, which is already funded, and then the second to postpone it until our next meeting, the second position. Can we have a motion? We yeah, have a second with that discussion. So the motion that we'd be voting on now will be postponed? Yes. I Just for a second. Then we would do the motion to amend. <clears throat> We did a motion to postpone it first. Right. And then we did the motion to amend it. Right. Okay, so we have a motion by second. Call for question. All in favor? To postpone. To postpone. Aye. Aye. No. 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 That fails to pass. Now we go back to the original. Now we're back to Mr. Sayers. No, it's your. It's your. He. Okay. He it. That yes. was. I thought. So. <coughs> we just voted on the postponement. Oh, okay. So we got back to fun both of the motion yes. I originally said. Okay. So we're on there. We're voting on the motion to fund both of the motions. Call the question. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay, it passes. Next is awarding a contract for third party testing for the new Rivermont Fire Department. Ms. Rossman. Uh, good morning, Chairman Murray and members of the board. Um, as part of the Rivermont Fire Station construction, the county was responsible for the issuance of the request for proposals. Uh, for third-party testing. Um, the proposal basically outlines a variety of testing that needs to occur during construction, such as compaction testing, uh, concrete hardness testing, um, and others that are listed as a cover sheet. That RFP was advertised on June 17th in the Northern Virginia Daily, uh, and we received proposals on July 8th. Uh, we did receive three proposals from that, uh, PCS, Triad, and CTO. Uh, we did have a selection committee that reviewed the proposals. We also reviewed it twice with our architect um, and their engineer. Um, and we are recommending at this time to award the um, contract to ECS. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about it. Anyone have a question? I just wanted to know. Okay. And you're not testing any virgin soil like there, are you? Everything is it's just in, uh, the disturbed and the concrete. Things like that. That, right? um, that is my understanding of it, Mr. Stanley. If you have any, we did an initial. Um, we did a geotechnical study geotech study of the site of the Virgin site prior to um, completing the design of the facility. So that work has already been completed. We've actually had um, we all like engineering out there to do some preliminary work as we're obviously moving forward with the project. So a few things have been already been picked, picked up, but. Um, um, the work that we're looking to do is the compassion testing of the pad site, the footers, and steel erection, all the other part of the inspection. Uh, uh, new, new stuff. Okay, that's my that only question. Does <coughs> anyone else have any? Who's on the selection committee? Uh, it was me, our project manager, Jeff Hayes, uh, Mr. Stanley reviewed him as well, along with two staff from Mosley Architects. Any other questions? 
Here for a motion. Okay, for a motion. I move that the Board of Supervisors award contracting amount not to exceed 45000 to ECS Mid-Atlantic LLC for construction testing services for the new Rivermont Fire Station and authorize the County Administrator to execute the contract on the County's behalf. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we go into a closed session. Mr. Sayre. I move the board enter into a closed meeting on the provisions of section 2.2-3708-11A1 of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act for discussion of assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or Police of any public body. I further move that discussion be limited to the county attorney. I move the board enter to a closed meeting on the provisions of section 2.2-37-11A7 for consultation with legal counsel pertaining to actual or probable litigation. I further move that discussion be limited to national. Litigation. Finally, I move the board enter to a closed meeting on the provisions of section 2.2-271188 for consultation with legal counsel regarding specific legal matters regarding provision of legal advice. I further move that discussion be limited to accounting and debt services. Second. And we have a roll call, please. Mr. Carter? Yes. Ms. Gladys? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Sayer? Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. And we are moved to a closed session. Okay. 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 We're back in session. Mr. Sayer? I move that the board certifies to the best of each member's knowledge only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under sections 2.2-37-11-A1-A7 and A8 of Virginia Freedom of Information Act and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened or occurred, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the public body. Second. Ms. Bounce, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Fox? Aye. Mr. Sayer? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Ms. Lavis? Aye. Mr. Carter? Aye. Is there anything else to be brought forward at this time? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board of Supervisors approve raising the cap on legal fees uh, to $750,000 for the provision of legal counsel by Sam Sanderson on behalf of the Front Royal Warren County Economic Development Authority for a specific legal matter. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? If not, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Carter? Aye. Ms. Lavis? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Sayer? Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. That passes. Next is general public presentation comment period. Ms. Spouse, has anyone signed up? Yes, Mr. Chairman, three individuals. Mr. Paul Gabbert? All right, Paul Gabbert, 1221 Valley View Drive. I know y'all get tired of seeing me come up here, but I talk to a lot of people in the county, and they asked me to come up here for them because they're too afraid to come up here and speak in front of you. So with all of those people, I come up here, and I have their rights, not just mine. And one of, of the things is, well, first, I've got a, I've got a question for our, well, Mr. Stanley's not here. He was that, sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on. A lot of these things are, are why the people of the county are so angry, and, and it even goes beyond angry of, you know, everybody, the EBA, all of you, they see one of them is, is land being, being bought up for whatever reason, uh, buildings, a, a warehouse being bought that, that is 
The, the monthly payment is $25,000 on it. And then you have insurance on top of that. It's, what a waste of money. And that, that's, that's what everybody sees, is, is so much waste of money that everybody's afraid this county is going to go bankrupt. And let's see. They don't, the citizens feel like their concerns aren't important to anybody. That is one of the good things. They, the, there's no action taken uh, for any concerns that the, that the uh, citizens bring up here. There, there's just nothing ever said or done about these issues. This, the, the people of this county, they're, they're looking for a, a change in leadership all the way around. This is how angry people are. I don't know if y'all follow Facebook, uh, What's Up Front Royal, all these other things, but if you do, you can see that people are very, very angry, and they're angry over the same issues. Uh, Mr. Stanley is here. Mr. Stanley, I, I, I've got a question for you, whether you'll answer it or not. Uh, can you can you give me the two names of the other insurance companies that were solicited for the county insurance? Mm -hmm. Not going to answer that, huh? Mr. Chairman. <laughs> no, this is not a question. The answer period. Um, when you, you say have, you've always answered my question. So when you say county insurance, so. The insurance that Mr. Carter has. All right, that's not the county insurance. The county is insured by okay, the... Okay, the insurance that Mr. Carter has. Was there other two, two companies solicited? The insurance, if you're referencing the Fire and Rescue Department, because I have no, no involvement with the EDA ins, uh, insurance. What the, what the insurance Mr. Carter has with the county. With the county. With the county. Was there two other, other companies solicited? So it was put out... It's a very I'm, easy question. I'm trying to answer it, Mr. Gabbert. No, you're not. Mr. Chairman, please. The um, county put it out to bid. When you put things out to bid, it's governed by the Code of Virginia as far as the process. Who was so it put so out you, it was we put out, advertised in a newspaper, it was put on our website and advertised, and we solicited bids. So um, I think the county received two Chesterfield insurers, I believe was one, and I believe Stoneburner Carter was the other. We received two bids. So we don't control when we advertise the, you know, who submits or who doesn't. We don't uh, conform to who, somebody may call the fire and rescue department and ask about the insurance and decide not to put a bid on in for that. But we advertise that anyone would have the ability to be able to submit a bid on that insurance package. So there's a little thing in paper that, that you're looking for people to bid on, but the county doesn't call other other insurance agencies to ask if they want to put a bid on it to save the county money. Chief, maybe in those instances you do talk to other insurance companies. I'm not worried about the Is chief. That That's not what I'm asking. Okay. Uh, another big problem, and I, I might as well go ahead and have without me and Mr. Stanley are, are going back and forth. The biggest thing in this county is that people want to see the uh, county administrator replaced. That's a fact. Everybody. So I hope that you all don't, don't go behind everybody and make a quick thing of voting him back in before the new members get put on the board. If you do, I'm, you know, you're not going to be a very well-liked person in this county. People have a hard time getting uh, accounting issues, uh, getting any kind of requested information about county uh, money, about budgets. They get the runaround. They don't get their calls answered. Uh, this is an experience that I have. There was a phone call made to the, to the uh, county to get uh, a balance, a, a, a monthly balance. I think it was through June. Got the runaround. Couldn't send it to us. What they did send didn't make sense. It wasn't what we were asking for. Then we find out that uh, they don't do monthly, uh, monthly statements because they don't do accruals until the end of the year. You can't do accruals at the end of the year. That's impossible. That's totally impossible. And that came from 
Mr. Stanley's office. So if you don't do accruals every month, you don't know how much money you have. That, that's basic accounting. We were told that the uh, accounting system is totally outdated, that it, 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 it's so old that they have to put stuff in through, uh, uh, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, we were told through Mr. Stanley's office that the accounting system is, is just old and no good. This is what a lot of people would like to see because the accounting system is so old and so, and because nobody, nobody can get any answers about the amount of money that, that this county has on a, on a monthly basis or anything. People are sent different numbers. They're sent what they're not, they're not asking for. And this is what this, everybody I talk to say, hey, we should do this. <clears throat> The county should get a group of citizens, let this group of citizens pick out an accounting firm to do an audit for the last two years and see how bad this dilapidated uh, accounting system in is and, and to see if the numbers are correct. And of course that would be paid for by the county. But people want these answers. People, you know, people have questions, they want them answered. They want to know how much money this county actually has, how much money is being spent, uh, and where it's going to. Where it's going to. There is land being bought up out on Happy Creek Road by individuals that know building is going to be happening out there. It's a hot spot. Mr. Llewellyn is one that left an EBA meeting when he was on the board or he was chairman, left the meeting early to go out and get a loan to buy the land where the hospital sits. That's insider information. That's ridiculous. That's how a lot of the land in this county is being bought up because people know what's coming. And another person who owns a big track of land out there that has already been engineered for residential is Mr. Kirk Tran of IP Federal. I just thought that was very amusing. And I think that's all I have. Oh, yes. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. James Harper. Yeah, yeah, you should have given Mr. Stanley uh, Shenandoah County's phone number. My name is James Harper. I live at 3658 Rockland Road in Parkway. Mr. Chairman, Supervisors, I come before you this morning to follow up on a few items from our last appearance and submit a list of questions that the Chairman promised last month that if I give to them, he will get answers. I've attended the last several meetings and offered what I and others think are suggestions to improve certain operations in the county. And so far, not one supervisor has followed up on anything. Since the county has had six years of tax increases, wouldn't it be a good idea to consider listening and asking questions? On a positive note, I'd like to say I thank the superintendent of the regional jail, and I'm hoping I pronounce his last name correctly, Mr. Gillickson, is doing a good job. After listening to the podcast on the Royal Examiner, he and Sheriff Carter seemed to have a very good understanding of the issues. It was brought up by Sheriff Carter that the jail runs at 90% capacity and staffing is 75%. That means a lot of overtime and tired employees and could pose a problem. The cleanup of our roads by the inmates helps our community look better. Now if they can figure out how to stop people from littering, that would be great. <coughs> Praising Mr. Gillickson does not mean that you need to tear up his contract and give him another raise. All too often you supervisors and school board members don't feel it necessary to have employees complete their contracts before handing out big raises. 
I am against the residential Crooked Run development that Mr. Stanley seems to be pushing. This is the only hope for com major commercial development in Warren County in the near future. The selling point is that it's close to I-66 and 81. The res residential development is a loser for the town and county. Water treatment upgrades will have to be done along with costly infrastructure work. Maybe this should be a referendum on the November ballot and see how the citizens feel. By the way, we already have residential development approved off Half Creek Road, and that is close to our schools. Let's develop that first. The Economic Development Authority is a mess. I think you should still shut it down for two years until we have a handle on all the financial issues. After listening to their last meeting, they still do not have a handle on all the loans and lines of credit. It's unbelievable. Very frustrating to hear Mr. Parsons say that Carolyn at the bank is checking and will get back to us. No urgency. There seems to be no urgency, and I would imagine law enforcement would be interested to see if any malfeasance occurred in any loans or lines of credit. I would also like to see a list of the properties the EDA owns, and also Warren County might publish those in local papers along with associated debt of these properties for citizen feedback. We deserve to know, as this is our money. The last EDA board meeting, they spent more time discussing per diem than on how to attract new business development. The gentleman in the green shirt, I didn't catch his name, was the only person asking relevant questions. Any EDA board member who voted to purchase the Stokes building should resign as they do not have the county's best interests. The EDA board members should also pledge during their term not to enrich themselves. One board member and Mr. Parsons should schedule a meeting with Mr. Tran to discuss his plans moving forward. I understand that Sheets would like to build across the bridge on Shenandoah Avenue. It's not a good spot as it will cause too much traffic back up all the way to the stoplight. And we don't have, and don't we have enough gas stations already? And this is for you, Mr. Sayer. Mr. Sayer, will you drop your case against Jennifer McDonald? I'm just talking to you, Mr. Mc, Mr. Sayer. She is probably using county money, in other words, citizen money for her legal team. If you win, it might be by county money that you win. Stop being a bully and say it's taxpayer money. In the last few weeks, I've been going down to Edinburgh reading the Northern Virginia Daily newspapers, and I see your name in several le legal proceedings. In 2010, you were sued, it seems, for the same reason that you're suing Jennifer McDonald. It does seem that you have a problem getting along with people. And the name of that case is Solidarity versus Sayer, E.T. And a list of questions for the chairman. And I'll read those out loud so they can be a minute, but I want to be sure you've got those in writing. Please provide a list of all the EDA, EDA and county owned properties. That's number one. The Board of Supervisors goals for 2019, number 11. Please provide your plans for stopping the deficit spending to break even or show a profit at the Front Royal Country Club. The Board of Supervisors goals for 2019, number 22. What is your plan to make the airport self-sufficient? Why was the real regional jail built on prime real estate site and not on a B or C site? What are your plans for bringing natural gas to everyone in Warren County? Does Mr. Stanley have an interest in the Crooked Run development? Did you or any other supervisor speak to Mr. Stanley about his lack of oversight regarding the EDA in the last several years? If so, what was his response? Did you ask Mr. Stanley why he could not 
call neighboring counties to see who they use for county insurance to get a third bid. Why does Mr. Stanley drive a county-owned Chevy Suburban and not a mid-sized car? His contract does not specify a top-of-the-line car. Did anyone question any school board member about the million-dollar bonus paid to a contractor to do roof work at Russie Jeffries in the evening? And this one, uh, why doesn't the clerk, whom the, the board states in their policy and procedures section 2-3, as being, being the county administrator, follow the policy and having the agenda posted at least 48 hours prior to the board of supervisors meeting, stated in section 5-2. The board meeting is today at 9 a.m. and the agenda was not online at 1 p.m. yesterday when I checked. I checked again last night and it was finally posted. Did our county administrator just forget? Thank you and I look forward to your response, Mr. Chairman. I respond to at least one of the items now for the last two years. The airport has been self-sufficient. Breaking you? It's profited by 45 or 46,000 for the, uh, over the last two years. Really? Yes. If we do our homework, we can find that out. Thank you. I will I'll go back and look at the Northern Virginia Daily. Is that correct, Ms. Klaus? I'm not on the airport commission. Oh. Well, I'll go back and read the Northern Virginia. That's my source of information uh, is going back. And maybe that's not a good place, but uh, that's the only avenue that I have is to read the local papers. I was on the airport authority and I saw we had turn to make a profit or at least on the operational side. Uh, we do have a member of the airport commission here. So you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we are on the profit side. Uh, no longer a, a member of that commission, but Mr. Chairman, we have someone here that may address that. Mr. Childers in the back, if he would care. Is that something you could address, Mr. Childers? Certainly. Chairman, members of the board, don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I believe last year's operating budget we had a surplus of $48,000, $49,000, if I'm not mistaken. So we have been operating in the black for the last the year before that. Do you have you recall? I don't recall the number off the top of my head, but when it's been about five or six years ago, we started operating in the black. I know you've had some capital costs, land and yes. things like that. But yes. That, from an operating standpoint, I think you operating standpoint we at least break even thank you well, thank i you. appreciate having mr children come thank you can i do a follow-up question mr chairman really not supposed to but go ahead uh, how, how much money does the maybe mr stanley could help me with this one how much money does the county uh give the airport uh each year well <laughs> when we're saying covering its weight so the rentals of your hangars the rentals from companies like PHI that are there versus expenses there's no uh, when we're saying we're breaking even or making money on a positive cash flow that means no general fund tax dollars in the operation again I think they're from a uh, grant and capital we've been matching uh, grant applications again the feds will pick up 90% of a lot of the um, cost of capital, 8% on a, a state if it qualifies, and 2% local. But I'd say when we say we're breaking even, correct, Bob, there's no general fund tax revenue. That means that the revenue generated from leases and rentals at the airport cover the operational costs, say for FY19. So what you're saying is the county doesn't give any money to the airport? It, it would in years that we're running a deficit. Correct. Correct. And this past year? This past year, at least, I think you're correct that it was a possible. County gave no money. Correct. Okay. On, on the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone else? Tim Radigan.
point. Tim Radigan, 9079, Stonewall Jackson Highway. I had to think about it for a second. Um, I want to keep this as short as I can. Um, I live on or in South River on Stonewall Jackson Highway, um, the 340. And for the most part, I happen to think, I'm a little biased, but I happen to think that um, the 340 happens to be one of the most scenic routes in Warren County. Every spring, I look forward to the appearance of the red bud and, of course, the dogwood. And uh, this year, the uh, red bud season was um, a little shorter than last year. Last year, I think it went about two or three weeks. But uh, I have been concerned, very concerned. And it seems like every day, or every other day, there is a, as I'm driving in to town, there's another new bag of trash on the side of the road that's been busted open. Or there's a TV antenna in the ditch. And there's a great big bag of trash that's been busted open and spread around all over someone's driveway. I'm going to ask a question and I will give you the courtesy to answer the question or get back to me at some time. We do, the, the Warren County Code, correct me if I'm wrong, does have a section in it regarding covering your loads, do they not? Aren't you supposed to be able to, you know, have to cover your loads? You're correct. I, I drive a little SUV and I put all the trash in the back so I never have to really worry about stuff flying out. Okay, but people with pickup trucks, you know, are driving down the road with their, obviously with their loads uncovered. I don't think anybody deliberately sits in the back of the truck and throws trash bags on the side of the road. Okay, so my big question is this. I know the county provides for free nets or cargo nets to tie these loads down. Now my big question is, and again I will wait patiently for your reply, you don't have to answer now, but is there something we can do to start enforcing the this cover your load thing? A, a couple of one or two deputies in different spaces because everyone's got to travel down three four to get to that um, recycling area. We start pulling these people over and telling them, listen, you've got to cover your load because there's trash up and down three four. Seems sometimes it seems to gather right over to that brand new bridge that they put in. And it's you know I like where I live, and you know I'd like to say see it stay, you know, relatively beautiful and nice. You know. Another question I have, and uh, again I will wait patiently for the answer, is who's familiar with the Jake Brake? Are most of you familiar with a Jake Brake is on an eighteen wheeler? Okay. I live in a house that I consider to be almost, um, well, let's put it to you this way. My, my window sills are about that deep. I can use my window sills as a bookshelf. So it's a concrete block house. Okay? It takes a lot to get noise to come into my house. Three o'clock this morning, I am sound asleep. I checked the time because I could not believe the audacity of this driver. This truck driver comes roaring down our street with his Jake brake on, and I actually heard it, and it woke me up out of the dead sleep. Now my question is this, maybe it's something for VDOT, I don't know. But when I was a truck driver for a very short period of time, occasionally I would drive through small residential areas, and I would find a sign posted. This is a residential area. These do not use your jaybird. Is there something similar that we can do in Warren County to that effect? 
Now that's a question that I will patiently wait for an answer. Another thing that I would like to just comment on briefly is for the past few months we have witnessed a outpouring of citizen complaint. We have also witnessed a, a large increasing numbers of, of activist groups such as the Warren County Coalition, One Mad Mother I think is the name of another one. And believe it or not, this is, a, this is a very positive thing for Warren County. So positive, in fact, that I would encourage, if I had the opportunity, the Virginia Commonwealth government to pay attention to what's going on in Front Royal. I would even go so far as to say that the federal government, in particular the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, and even the President of the United States, to pay attention to what is going on in Warren <coughs> County. Warren County is a, is a glaring example of what happens when the citizens finally rise up and say, we have had enough. Because you know, that is what citizen participation is about, holding their elected officials accountable. Granted, it should be done on a monthly basis, weekly basis, daily basis, sometimes we citizens had a tendency to fall asleep at the will, and before we realize it, we're hit with bombshell announcements in the newspaper. That shouldn't happen. That should be a rarity. The citizens of Warren County are showing us now, and showing you now, what happens when they finally say, you had your chance, and if you don't do something about it real quick, you're going to be voted out of office. This, this is a shining example of what the federal government or the House of Representatives and the Senate should be worrying about. I mean, if Warren County, the citizens of Warren County and citizens of Front Royal can rise up and literally seize control of a public hearing at a um, Warren County Board of Supervisors meeting to the point of one man standing up and saying, suspend the rules, Think what would happen if an entire nation rolls up against the House of Representatives. So Front Royal is an example, granted on a very small scale, of what happens when the government fails the citizens and the citizens rise up and say, enough is enough. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Mouse, anyone else? No one else has signed up. Is there anyone else that would care to speak at this time? Is there anyone else that would care to speak? Third and final call with nothing else to be done. We're adjourned.